down. Uh, it's going to handle every kind of weather. Uh, uptime is, is super important for any kind of semi-truck. So we've, we've tested durability in every kind of weather, every kind of environment. Um, I mean, you can, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we, so even just, we've driven Donner, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but we've been through hot, cold, snow, rain. We've been putting this thing through all its paces in the lab as well as in the real world. You know, the simulation team has been doing an incredible job of being able to scale all of that you know, in the uh, virtual side. Thanks for joining us once again. Our focus today is on the 100 mile range experienced by the Sacramento based Tesla Semi by PepsiCo. So we wanted to, to laser in on this today because as you know, there's a 424 mile range experience that T PepsiCo had when it came to the Modesto based chip vehicles but when they went on to uh, the the Sacramento based semi big challenges just a reminder this is uh, Tesla fan insight thanks for joining us uh, please take time to like and subscribe and uh, please join us on patreon if you'd like some other info on great investing and trading ideas as well as other shows not presented on this channel so one of the things that we did was to sort of do some research with different folks and a bunch of our viewers and some others were suggesting that it's possible that there's a hundred mile range that's the target was that was being used by this vehicle hence the difference between a hundred miles for one semi that has a 500 mile battery versus the other that is also a 500 mile battery but it only went for 424 miles. So we wanted to present another look at this and we call it the 100 degrees below challenge. So um, it turns out that um, in the greater, I want to call it Sacramento area, Sacramento is about 100 miles away from the summit. Um, of the Sierra Mountains in a place called Donner pa Pass. The mountains go as high as 13,000 feet. And obviously, uh, the higher you go into the mountains, the colder it gets, particularly during the winter months. So one of the issues uh, that we're facing here is if you have a vehicle that's in, let's say, zero degree weather, and it's moving at 60 miles an hour, in essence, the vehicle and the battery pack are sitting in um, uh, 60 below zero temperatures. And so my experience of Lake Tahoe has been that, you know, the, the range of temperature tends to be on the highs, like any place else, 70s or 80s. But their lows during the winter tend to be between, let's say, 30 uh, daytime and maybe five below uh, regularly and possibly roaming into the you know 20 or 30 below periodically uh, during the winter months especially uh, at the sort of peak of snow etc so um, there's a number of scenarios that you could throw out that introduce challenges to the semi obviously one scenario is it's zero degrees and uh, the the wind is blowing in, in five to 10 to 15 mile an hour gusts. And so in theory, that zero is gusting to 20 below, 25 below degree, degrees. Now we have the other problem of the fact that the vehicle is moving. So whatever the speed it's going at further lowers the average temperature or, or yeah, the average temperature the vehicle is experiencing. So it's entirely possible then that, um, you know, the semi is experiencing 100 degrees um, below zero as its operating experience in the mountains uh, of, of Lake Tahoe. So this is important because obviously this is the coldest it'll have to deal with in regular deliveries in the United States. And having experience and knowledge of what's going to happen in this situation 
serves it well in low elevation mountains or hills that the vehicle might have to operate in. Now, the other component of all this, as you know, is the fact that there's this issue of what's called battery conditioning. So the ideal operating temperature for the batteries um, in the electric environment tend to be between 30 degrees and 80 degrees. So what you'll notice with any Tesla vehicle is during the winter months, particularly based on temperature, you could have uh, anywhere from 20 or 25 percent up to 50 percent of the range lost by vehicles because that power is being used to, in essence, turn on a heater to heat up the batteries so they can operate, find the operating temperatures that um, are most comfortable for those vehicles. No difference with the semi. I'll remind you that one of the points that Elon made was that there was a state-of-the-art HVAC system that they had created. And the guts of the idea of that system is how well can it manage um, bringing temperatures down if it's too hot for the batteries to operate in or bringing the temperatures up uh, so you can have uh, ideal operating conditions for the operation of those batteries. So, um, you know, sidebar note, as you know, you can't just insulate your way out of this problem because, um, you know, there's heat generated, you know, as you have uh, the use of electricity. So that's not a, a, a very easy solution to the problem. Um, so basically what we're coming up with is the fact that if you have a 500 mile range battery and you're in a situation where the vehicle is moving on average 60 miles an hour and we're in an environment that's at zero, maybe five or 10 below, um, in essence, this battery pack is having to elevate its temperature from uh, what's outside at, at 50 or 70 degrees below all the way up to about 30 degrees. And it's our assessment that this possibly consumes about half the battery pack's energy. So therefore, we're now at, at about a 250 mile range. And then if we're gonna do routes in this kind of temperature, we therefore have to consider the fact that if you wanna be really conservative to make sure the vehicle returns, allocating 100 miles out for deliveries and therefore 100 miles back from those deliveries is probably the wisest choice to make sure that um, you, uh, you don't have any you know, issues pop up with being able to find charging uh, on your way back. So um, we are definitely gonna be you know, digging more into this uh, with some of our sources. But overall, I wanted to say that, you know, this is an interesting problem for Tesla and it shows how a battery pack can be sort of consumed by cold weather. I'll be intrigued to see how uh, smaller entities uh, with, in terms of battery pack size that initiate the process with 230 miles of range are dealing with this cold weather issue because if Tesla is giving up half the pack to heat up the battery in those cold climates, you'd assume everybody else has the same problem. So therefore their range is gonna drop down to about 100 miles, um, uh, you know, that's available. So that's 50 out and 50 back um, if we're talking you know, extreme cold. So um, I, I think that in general, this is a good idea for Tesla Tesla has done their testing and now Pepsi is doing its, you know, real world testing to see how to integrate those vehicles into their system. And I think it makes sense for them to collect data and leverage that data, you know, for good choices in terms of number of vehicles to purchase, where to put them, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I look forward to, we're a lot of great engineers on our show, so I'm looking forward to comments on this, but uh, I have to say it makes sense because it's brutally uh, cold and those batteries don't, don't like sub-zero temperatures and therefore you got to give up range in order to address that. Um, we really didn't get into the fact that as the 500 mile range was discussed, we're also not covering the fact that you have to climb mountains and when you're climbing, 
you consume more pack in the effort to haul loads up those mountains as well. So I believe that this is another variable in the consumption of a pack and therefore all the numbers on Tesla have been sort of rated against a flat surface which climbing the mountains of Sierra are not. So again, we uh, very much look forward to your comments on all of this. Um, you know, I think Tesla's, the vehicle is still awesome. I, I think that based on their experience, we'll probably end up seeing the routes chosen for the semi to be easy ones relative to temperature. And then as there's more data collected, um, we can see these vehicles sort of moving into the more challenging environments um, if and when it, that's needed. This ends our formal portion of coverage of the semi and the 100 uh, below zero portion and we move off into our health tips. Um, the biggest health tip that I wanted to review is we actually had a professor from University of Michigan whose name is Dinesh and he really emphasized the point that uh, despite the fact that he focuses on gout for his research, um, he actually was the one who gave us the idea of actually doing 25 leg lifts a day per leg with a five pound weight. If you don't have the five pound weight uh, available, one might wanna just go ahead and uh, use your leg weight and just do the lifts anyway as a way to strengthen quad muscles uh, limiting potential for knee issues going forward. At any rate, I want to thanks again for joining us. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, au revoir, le hitrod, choda hafez, thrasiche, ni hao ma, kombawa. And in Jamaica, we say enough respect, walk with ma. Thanks and have a great day, and bye for now.